Hi, it's Dwyer. April 1st, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about this classic. Fabio Wardley against Fraser Clark. Just a few quick thoughts. This video is really more parental than anything else. I just want to offer my thoughts to the fighters before they do something rash. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now just some quick thoughts on the fight, folks. It's a classic, it's a must watch. My thoughts are Fabio Wardley, younger, 29, uh, had the better ring coverage. He has the faster hands. He's the better athlete. He has an explosive right hand. Right? Let me point out, though, his nose started bleeding again. He gets hit. You can tell that just looking at the markings on his face after the fight. And Wardley is someone who doesn't have much of a back foot. He doesn't have the rhythm at 29 to develop a back foot and much better defense. Right, Fraser Clark? Let me just say, he had the better timing after Wardley's initial onslaught. In other words, the two guys like the same spacing. They like to stay about an arm's length away from each other. Every fight these two guys have is going to be combustible. If Fraser Clark is able to parry Fabio Wardley's initial straight right hand, Fraser Clark would be the person with the advantage. And Fraser Clark is a technician who can throw uppercuts. His right uppercut is one of the punches of this fight, right? In other words, he's the more accomplished boxer with, quite frankly, more of a back foot game and better defense than Fabio Wardley. You know, I'm glad that the fight ended in a draw. Um, I thought it's a heroic fight by both men. The real purpose of this video is to tell both guys, look, never fight each other again unless one of you is holding a world title. Not a local title, not a continental title, but a world title, right? Folks, you know, the goal in boxing, apart from getting great purses, is really to reach the upper rung of the sport, to get that championship, or at least to fight for a world championship, right? To reach the ultimate match. These guys are heavyweights. It's to fight for the heavyweight title. Now, we've seen this before, where two guys, for whatever reason, just seem made for each other where a lot of punches are going to be thrown, big punches are going to be landed, guys are going to be hurt. Let me just point out, I'm going to name two series of fights that, you know, were blood and guts, where when the guys were in the ring, wow, it was high octane. Rafael Marquez against Ishmael Vasquez. Please look up that series of fights. Those two guys were combustible. Those fights were high octane. They end with Vasquez losing an eye. I'm not kidding. Right? They end with both guys greatly diminished. Right? That series ends with both guys spent, having left a lot of their careers in the ring. Another series, of course, the great heavyweight series, perhaps the greatest of them all, 
Ali versus Joe Fraser. Right? For an earlier generation, they're going to say Ezra Charles versus Jersey Joe Walcott. Right? But just to understand, the thrill in Manila, that last Fraser Ali fight, folks, there's an open question right now to this day on whether Ali comes out for the 15th round. Right? Understand, Joe Fraser goes into the fight blind in one eye. We didn't know it at the time. They didn't tell us. The real story of that fight is that Ali targets Fraser's good eye. Eddie Futch, Hall of Fame trainer, Freddie Roach's former trainer, Eddie Futch realizes that his fighter cannot see. In other words, folks, Joe Fraser is in there swinging at colors. I'm not kidding. Right, so Eddie Futch pulls the fight because he understood that his fighter was blind at the end of that fight. They go to Ali, understand, this is a rough trilogy. They go to Ali, who's in his corner. Ali can barely move. Right now, Wardley, 29 years old. Fraser Clark, not much older. I believe he's like 32 years old. Guys, this is a heavyweight division where you have champions looking for opponents, right? You're going to have, obviously, the big fight, Usyk Fury. But understand, after that fight, one of the titles is going to split off. You're going to have Philippe Ergovic looking for a dance partner. You're going to have sanctioning bodies, directing traffic, setting up credible opposition, right? Don't spend your careers on this Wardley-Clark matchup when neither of you has a world title, right? Each of these fights is going to be draining. The fights are going to be high risk. Understand, there's a crowd out there that believes Wardley won the fight. There's a crowd out there that believes Fraser Clark won the fight. Right? You understand, future fights between these guys are going to be jump balls. Either guy could win. Right? Fraser Clark took so much punishment from Wardley's right hand every time you saw Wardley's straight right land up top. Didn't you think there was a chance Fraser Clark could just crumble to the canvas? Then you see Wardley getting hammered, and I mean hammered, with these uppercuts that he could not make an adjustment for. And understand, Wardley at 29, in my opinion, is too old to start thinking about defense when the bullets start flying. Right? He's not going to be in there thinking, oh, I need an R bar. He's not going <coughs> to He's not going to suddenly become a Vanda Holyfield. So each of the fights between Wardley and Fraser Clark are going to be blood and guts. Let me point out too that Fraser Clark is never going to get Wardley's quicker reflexes. Wardley is the better athlete, right? Wardley is not going to figure out how to box on the level that Fraser Clark can box, right? When Wardley's backing up, it's really because he's run out of ideas. When Fraser Clark is backing up, it's different. Fraser Clark's trying to set up a left hook. He's trying to set up a right uppercut, right? So understand, these two guys are combustible, right? They need to only fight each other when the ultimate prize is on the line, the heavyweight title, right? If it's an elimination fight for the right to fight for the heavyweight title, okay, I would understand that. But you have to ask yourself, and it's a foundational question, do I want to be heavyweight champ? 
Is that my goal in the sport? Right? Understand too. If you're fighting for the heavyweight championship, you're going to get paid. The money will be there. Right? So these guys have to ask themselves, do I want to tailor my career after this classic fight that raises the profile of both guys? That shortens the distance between each of these guys and the heavyweight title. Right? A promoter now can say, hey, you know, we're going to have Philippe Ergovic fight Fraser Clark for the heavyweight championship. And fans are going to think, well, I know Fraser Clark is a gamer. I know he's a gladiator. I saw that Wardley fight. Right? The same could be said about Fabio Wardley. Right, guys, you've already gotten your benefit from fighting the other guy. Right? We know you're competitive against each other. You're closer now to challenging for the heavyweight title than you were before the fight. Mission accomplished. There's no reason to continue this series while neither guy holds the heavyweight belt. Right? Save your energy for the bigger prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. Right? The heavyweight title. Understand, too, there is a distinct possibility that if Usyk beats Fury, that he retires from the game. Right? I know they have a rematch clause and stuff like that. Just to understand, if certain things play out, right, you can imagine if the little man beats the big man. Understand, Tyson Fury in the past wasn't able to make the rematch for the Vladimir Klitschko fight. Understand that both Fury and and Usyk are unbeaten going into this fight. There's going to be some emotional wear and tear on the loser. Right? If Tyson Fury gets knocked out by Usyk, let's understand, folks, Daniel Dubois does not go the distance against Usyk. Right? Just understand, if Fury gets knocked out by Usyk, Fury might not want the rematch. Right, Usyk at that point can say, okay, I have attained a certain status, undisputed, at least for the moment before they get stripped of that last belt, right, of the Philippe Ergovic belt. Usyk could say, okay, now's the time for me to walk away from the sport. I've just gotten a huge payday. I'm now undisputed. If there's any wiggle with Tyson Fury, any hesitancy on the rematch, Right? I can walk away. Errol Spence had a rematch clause for Terrence Crawford. Right? That fight hasn't happened. This is the way boxing sometimes rolls out. If the winner of this fight is Usyk and Fury isn't eager for the rematch, Usyk could ride off into the sunset with an unblemished record. Right? He could walk away undisputed champion. Likewise, if Fury comes out and destroys Usyk, and understand, Fury's the bigger man. If this looks like Usyk is too small for the division, even though he's physically bigger than Sonny Liston, there might not be the outcry for the rematch. Understand, if Tyson Fury, and I believe... Fury's going to linger in the sport. I believe for Fury, it's more of a lifestyle. It's more of a self-discipline. Right? If Fury beats Usyk, and there's no outcry for the rematch, Fury's going to need a dance partner. Now, obviously, you have Anthony Joshua out there. That's a blockbuster fight. No question about it. But understand, if Fury decides not to fight Joshua, and Lord knows, we've been waiting on that fight for years, haven't we? 
right? If that fight doesn't immediately happen, in other words, if the past is prologue, wow, wouldn't Fabio Wardley or Fraser Clark be an excellent opponent? Being a fellow UK fighter, wouldn't Fury against either of these guys fill a lot of seats? Fill a lot of wallets. After all, hasn't Fury already fought Derek Chisora three times? Right? So if I were these guys, I would thank the other one for the opportunity. I would not be interested in a rematch because, folks, the rematch is going to be blood and guts. Just like this last fight was. The rematch is going to be taxing. It's going to be demanding on the fighters' bodies. Just like this fight was. And understand, just like this fight was, the rematch is not going to involve a world title. Guys, you're much closer to a world title opportunity. Also, there is nothing wrong after a grueling fight like this with taking time to give your body time to heal. Right? If I were both of these guys, I'd say, hey man, I laid it all out there for this fight. Let me now... Take time to heal a little bit. Both guys, both guys took some major head shots. Right? Wardley got hit with an inordinate amount of uppercuts. Clark got hit with some very ferocious straight rights. Right? Nothing wrong with giving your brain a little bit of a rest, isn't there? Right? Nothing wrong with healing up. Nothing wrong with showing up at the gym to watch other guys spar after you have just given the kind of effort both of these guys have. To sum up, great fight. I like the scoring. Right? Close fight. I don't have a problem with it being a draw. Both guys get to live for another day. Both guys are remembered as being gladiators, being warriors for an epic match that's going to age extremely well. Right? Five years from now, you're going to be sitting in front of a TV. They'll have this match on and you'll say, wow, that was a match. Right? Both guys raised their profile. All I'm saying is save it now for a world title match or at least an elimination match, right? Save it now, because what we think will happen, right? Two matches between Fury and Usyk might not, because promoters are going to be looking for gladiator opponents to fill seats. And fellas, both of you, after this fight, fit the bill. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I understand. There's going to be a group out there that say, hey, what's wrong with having epic series? Right? I need for folks to understand <laughs> that Ali Fraser, believe it or not, during their fights, Ali was somehow able to fit in George Foreman and to actually become heavyweight champion. Right? Fraser was able to fit in George Foreman and he lost the title to Foreman. Understand. These guys did not jump back in the ring immediately with each other. Right? Let me also add, too, that there are many who believe that after Jersey Joe knocks out Ezra Charles in their epic fight in Pittsburgh, that Ezra Charles was never the same. Right? Both of these guys want to save their absolute best for a heavyweight title match. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.